president has given the orders. The USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group, the most powerful naval force on Earth, has moved to within strike range of Caracas. And for the first time in American history, the US has labeled an entire foreign government a terrorist organization, a threshold Washington never crossed, even with Saddam Hussein. That designation gives the president instant authority under the 2001 AUMF to launch strikes inside Venezuela without Congress. The airspace around the country is already locked down. No more warnings, no more flybys. Only one question remains. What happens when America pulls the trigger? Just hours ago, the world watched as a B-52 bomber, Pappy 11, loaded with JASSMS, escorted by four FA-18E Super Hornets and covered by an E-2D Hawkeye, executed a deliberate nighttime attack demonstration along the edge of Caracas. Not in secret, not covertly, but with active transponders tracked by 75,000 people on flight radar, intended to be seen by every radar operator in Venezuela, Russia, China, Cuba, Iran, and by Maduro himself. Everyone knows the stakes. Venezuela is China's gateway into the Americas, Russia's most important military partner in the region, and the geographic wedge that Beijing and Moscow are using to challenge U.S. influence just 600 miles from the American homeland. Chinese troops are training in Brazil. Chinese money props up dictators in Nicaragua and Cuba. Russian S-300 VMS guard Maduro's inner circle. And tonight, the largest and most expensive American war machine ever floated, Gerald R. Ford Strike Group, is parked right in their doorway. In this video, we're breaking down and analyze what the blueprint. How the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group would execute a real-world strike on a Chinese and Russian-backed military complex of Venezuela. Before we dive in, hit subscribe and smash the hype button so more Americans understand what's unfolding offshore right now. Now. Let's go inside the Ford Strike Group. Carrier Strike Group 12 is not a carrier attack group. It is a layered, networked, multi-domain combat architecture built for one purpose, erase threats before they can even react. The Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 is the centerpiece, the command cortex, the power projection engine. But the Ford doesn't just bring jets and missiles. It brings a full spectrum kill web that merges air superiority, precision strike, long range engagement, electronic warfare dominance, anti-submarine capabilities, and maritime control into a single, synchronized battle machine. The USS Gerald R. Ford, the most powerful warship ever put to sea. The Ford runs on two A-1B nuclear reactors, each reactor producing triple the electrical output of the Nimitz class, giving the ship unmatched energy to drive its radar arrays, jamming pods, defensive systems, and its unprecedented high-tempo flight operations. Instead of steam catapults, the Ford uses AMAILS, the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, delivering precise linear motor acceleration for every aircraft type in the air wing. Emails increases launch efficiency, reduces airframe stress, permits broader aircraft compatibility, and delivers the speed needed to maintain high sortie generation rates across sustained combat cycles. Landing operations run through AAG, advanced arresting gear, allowing smoother, safer, faster recoveries. Combined, emails and AAG allow the Ford to generate 50% more sorties per day than any carrier in history. This means more fighters airborne per hour, more electronic warfare coverage, and more sustained strike power than any adversary can match. Every deck elevator, weapons lift, fueling station, and maintenance bay is designed for continuous, uninterrupted, high-tempo warfighting, turning the Ford into a weapon manufacturing plant at sea, capable of launching strike waves for hours without degradation. Air Wing 8, the weapons system above the horizon. The power of a modern carrier isn't the ship, it's the air wing, and CVW-8 is the sharpest blade in the Navy arsenal. FA-18EF Super Hornets deliver air superiority, long-range strike operations, close air support, anti-ship engagements, and suppression of remaining Venezuelan air assets. Their combination of AIM-120 AMRAMs, JDAMs, laser-guided bombs, and anti-ship missiles makes them the workhorses of fast, precision engagement. EA-18G Growlers function as electromagnetic suppression platforms, deploying advanced jamming pods capable of defeating Russian-made S-300VM and Book M2E systems by disrupting tracking radars, breaking missile guidance, and blinding command links. Without counter-EW systems to match, Venezuela's air defenses lose coordination, target discrimination, and real-time situational awareness. E-2D Advanced Hawkeyes operate as airborne command posts, providing persistent 360-degree radar coverage, early warning, and real-time battle management. 
Their APY-9 radar tracks aircraft, drones, surface vessels, missile launches, and low observable threats across hundreds of miles, feeding the recognized maritime picture back to the Ford. They are the quarterbacks of the strike, dictating every movement, every intercept, every strike sequence. MH-60R-S Seahawks expand the strike group's control into the subsurface domain, hunting Venezuelan diesel-electric submarines, monitoring littoral waters, and securing sea lanes. They also provide combat search and rescue for downed pilots, and anti-surface targeting when strike packages require distributed lethality. Together, the Ford and CVW-8 build a sensor-rich, data-fused, multi-domain battle space, allowing the strike group to operate with total information dominance over Venezuelan forces. The Destroyer Screen the Armored Wall of Aegis Firepower. CSG-12's destroyers, USS Bainbridge, USS Mahan, and USS Winston S. Churchill, are Arleigh Burke-class warships equipped with the Aegis combat system. Each destroyer brings a 96-cell Virchant launch system, capable of firing SM-2 and SM-6 surface-to-air missiles, ESSM interceptors, and Tomahawk land attack missiles for deep inland precision strikes. Aegis integrates radar tracking, fire control, missile guidance, and networked threat analysis into one synchronized operating picture. This gives CSG-12 a layered air defense bubble, one that intercepts jets, drones, ballistic threats, and cruise missiles before they get within 100 miles of the carrier. These warships also host anti-submarine warfare suites, bow-mounted sonar, towed arrays, and MH-60R helicopters, ensuring that Venezuelan diesel submarines cannot approach undetected. The Strike Group as One Machine What makes CSG-12 terrifying is its integration. Every radar, every jet, every helicopter, every missile, every sensor, every electronic warfare jam feeds into a cooperative engagement capability, a real-time fusion of data and lethality. This means Venezuela isn't facing a carrier. It's facing an AI-enhanced, networked, nuclear-powered wargrid built to annihilate entire air defense networks with scientific precision. The Proxy War – Venezuela's Fragile Defenses Against a Modern Killweb China uses Venezuela as a strategic beachhead into Latin America, a geo-economic entry point for surveillance platforms, energy contracts, and military footholds. Russia supplies advanced SAM systems, the S-300VM and Book M2, in an attempt to build a defensive wall against American power projection. But Venezuela's air defense picture is brittle. The S-300VM can theoretically target aircraft, cruise missiles, and ballistic threats, but its radars are based on older, less agile Soviet scanning systems, vulnerable to jamming. Without stable data links and trained operators, the system collapses under electronic attack. The Book M2E offers medium-range air defense, but its engagement cycles rely on coordination with early warning radar sites, sites that tomahawks can destroy in the opening minutes of a strike. The Su-30 Mk-2 flanker is a capable airframe, but Venezuelan pilots lack the flight hours, simulators, avionics upgrades, and weapons loadouts needed to compete with U.S. Navy aviators supported by Hawkeyes, Growlers, and continuous AWACS quality coverage. Most critically, Venezuela lacks the integrated command and control network that modern battles require. Their radar grid is analog, their comms are fragmented, their logistics are failing, their spare parts pipeline is inconsistent, their electronic warfare resilience is minimal. CSG-12's killweb doesn't fight Venezuelan defenses, it switches them off. And with every Venezuelan weakness now exposed, the question shifts from, can the US win, to something far more urgent. How exactly would the US take the country apart, piece by piece, in the opening moments of a strike? Let's break down the playbook. Phase one, the opening salvo. Before Venezuelan operators even register a threat, the destroyers fire their Tomahawk missiles. These cruise missiles fly terrain-hugging profiles, striking airbases, command posts, S-300VM engagement radars, book batteries, and communication nodes. Runways shatter. Hardened aircraft shelters crumble. Air defense radars go silent. Venezuela loses its detection ability within minutes. Phase 2. Electronic Warfare Blackout EA-18G Growlers form the second wave. They unleash coordinated electronic attacks against any surviving radar emitters. Jamming pods sever data links, blind search radars, confuse tracking systems, and break missile guidance channels. Venezuelan SAM crews lose their targeting envelope entirely. Phase 3. Air Dominance Achieved With radars blinded and runways cratered, F-A-18 Super Hornets and F-35Cs sweep in. Any remaining Su-30s attempting emergency takeoff are intercepted and destroyed during climbout. American fighters penetrate to strike additional targets, fuel depots, air defense reload sites, military communication centers, and naval headquarters. 
Within the first two hours, Venezuela has no functional fighter force and no long-range air defense architecture. Phase 4. Hawkeye-Controlled Cleanup Operations E-2D Hawkeyes dominate the airspace, providing continuous radar coverage and directing all remaining sorties. MH-60Rs deploy forward to search for submarines or fast attack craft attempting to flee. Destroyers maintain perimeter missile coverage. CSG-12 locks down the battle space with total information superiority. The fight ends not when Venezuela surrenders, but when it loses the ability to perceive reality. So here's the real question the Pentagon won't ask out loud. If the US chooses to strike, does Venezuela fall in minutes? Or do China and Russia turn this into something much larger than anyone is prepared for? And an even deeper question for you. Is America enforcing stability in its own hemisphere or stepping into the opening chapter of a new great power conflict? I wanna hear your take. Drop your thoughts in the comments and let this debate begin because what happens next could reshape the Western hemisphere. And if you believe more people need to understand the stakes of this standoff, share this video and hit subscribe. Use the hype button as well. It pushes this conversation to more viewers while this crisis unfolds in real time. Your voice starts the discussion. History will finish it.